Welcome back to the Jongets Games playthrough for Santa Monica. At this point, we have played through the first couple of turns in a tutorial video where I also taught most of the rules. So if you missed that, then you can find a link for it down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now, as always, I'd like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I play through the rest of the game, and that will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and that will make this as accurate a playthrough as possible. All right, let's jump back into the game. At this point, it is now time for the blue player to take their first turn of the game. So they can look to their options, and they've decided to take this card here. Now that is above the food truck, so they are going to take a sand dollar as a bonus, and then this will move once to the right. After that, they can add this into their area, and you'll notice this card has four out of the five different tag types. The only thing that it isn't is Tourist. We can see it says Manta Ray Yoga, so that is definitely more of a sporty local business that has some nature around it. Uh, now they're going to put this over here, and that is going to be worth two points to them at the end of the game, as long as they don't have a ring feature in either of these two spots, because of course they already don't have to worry about having one over there. After that, they can finish their turn by resetting the display, and now it's time for us to go, and we do have two sand dollars to spend. This means we could perform that action over there, which would let us take a tourist or a local tag card from anywhere, and we can move uh, up to two people once. Now, when we look over here, there is a tourist tag on that card, and that appears to be the only one that matches up with our bonus. In fact, I just realized that our VIP bonus matches very well with this sand dollar action. Um, now, we should certainly keep that in mind going forward, but it might make sense for us to hold on to these. If we get two more, then we could pick up two cards instead of one in a turn, which also does seem powerful. Well, I am certainly tempted to take this right over here. It wants two of any type of people, and we have three people over here currently not doing anything at this wedding. Um, that does seem good, but I think instead, let's go with this card. That has the food truck under it, so we are going to get a sand dollar, and then we will get four more sand dollars. So that is going to bring us all the way up to seven, which is, of course, just a lot of options for us when it comes to using these sand dollar actions over there. Uh, now, this does make us lose four points at the end of the game if it is adjacent to a people bonus, so let's put it over here to the left. This means we have to make sure to not put a gained people bonus into either of these two spots, and I think we should be able to pull that off. Um, now, it's worth noting that the game does come with these 5x multipliers, so we could put one on here, and that would act as 5 sand dollars, but I think at this point, we're okay with just leaving these on here, and I think we are very likely to spend these on our next turn. All right, we can now reset our turn, and of course, move the food truck over. This means it's now the yellow player's turn, and they've decided to take this card. That means they are going to get a foodie bonus, and then this will move over to the right. So they're going to put this over here, and that will get them a sand dollar, and then they can do two movement with one person. In this case, they're going to move their VIP back over here, and you'll notice this location does have a matching symbol, and it's on the street, so that means they can put a footprint token down over there. After that, they get one more movement, and they will head over here, and once that happens, they also get another movement with their foodie. So they can move any of these at this point, and they've decided to move another tourist over here to the right. The last thing to point out is they will now get one point at the end of the game for every sand dollar that they have when the game is over, so that's certainly something for them to keep in mind as they choose cards in the future. Well, yellow can finish out their turn by refreshing the display, and now the blue player can go. After looking over their options, they want this card, and they are going to place it over here on the right. As you can see, they have extended out a chain of two sport tags, two local tags, and three of the business tags. This is also going to come into play with a local over here. Well, that's finished up their turn, so now we get to go. And when we consider the fact that we have seven sand dollars, I think let's spend four of them in order to do this action. Now we have a really good option out here, and that is this one, because this will score for being in a chain of three or more sporting tags, and it already is in a chain if we put these next to each other, so that is a really good start. Now this also gives us a bunch of places to put our people. So let's take both of these, and on top of that we will also get a foodie bonus. And now we can place these down in any order of our choosing, so that means we can place this here, and then this one down underneath it, because it is adjacent. Now, at this point, the only placement bonus we get is right here, so that's going to give us a sand dollar, and now we are going to get one point at the end of the game for every two sand dollars that we end with, so not quite as good as the one that the yellow player got. 
At this point, the last thing we have to do is use our foodie bonus. And I think let's just move somebody over here. In this case, we can put any type of people in these volleyball nets. So we'll just send a local for the moment. Um, now, whenever you put somebody onto a card that has a ring, you can move them into or out of the ring as a free action if you like. So let's leave them in. After that, the foodie will move one space forward and we can refresh by pulling out two cards. At this point, it's the yellow player's turn and they are going to spend two sand dollars in order to do this bottom action. So that lets them take a card that has a tourist or a local tag from anywhere and then they can move two people once. Now they are going to take this card because it does have that tourist tag and then they are going to put that right over here, which makes sense considering that is close to a bunch of tourists that they already have. Now, as the other part of this action, they can move two people once, and this is pretty simple for them. They're going to head both of these tourists right up here, so once they are in that ring, that is now worth four points to them at the end of the game. On top of that, this is worth two points if it's next to one business feature, and it is, and this is going to help extend out the tourist tag chain, so overall, that was a really good card for the yellow player. All right, it's time for the blue player to go. After considering their options, they're going to take this card here, which is going to give them a foodie bonus. And they've decided to put that right over here. As you can see, that is a private beach. It says no trespassing, and that does not have a ring feature on it. So that means officially all of the cards adjacent to this do not have that feature, which means that is worth two points to them. Now, uh, this does have a local tag, which means that this is worth two points to them. And after that, they will get two sand dollars for the placement bonus. The final thing they can do is use their foodie bonus, and with that, they are going to move one of their two VIPs one space over. You'll notice they have two of these compared to the one of everybody else, so hypothetically, they could send one that way and the other one over there to the left. Now, we can see that they are going to put footprints down onto every sporting and wave tag spot visited, and this does have a sport tag, which means they can put a foot icon there, which will be worth one point to them at the end of the game. After that, the foodie is going to move once to the right, and now that they have caught up with the food truck, whoever takes this card will get a happy day where they get two bonuses. So now this can be reset at the end of the blue player's turn, and now we can go. Well, at this moment, we have four sand dollars, which means we could once again activate that to take two cards. However, if we did that, then we would not get any of the bonuses associated with these tokens. Uh, at the moment, we have the ability of taking this card, which would give us a double bonus for the happy day. And I think we should not pass that up. So yeah, let's take this card. And at the moment, unfortunately, we don't have any of the wave icons. So we should probably put this, uh, I suppose, over here. That makes sense considering we don't want to put any cards down that have people generating bonuses. So that blocks one of the two spots over there. And then after that, we can take two bonuses. So this means we could move two people, take two sand dollars, or do one of both of those things. Well, sand dollars keep us more flexible. And while we do want to move some people over here, I don't feel a huge hurry for that. So I think let's just take two sand dollars can add those over here and we're back up to six and then after that happy day bonus the food truck will move two spaces over to the right uh, it looks like that has finished out our turn because we don't have any placement bonuses so we can reset the market and then the yellow player can go and they have decided to take this card that is on the spot with the food truck so that is going to give them a sand dollar for a bonus and then of course this will move over next up they have to add this card to their area and they're going to put it here that way it's next to another one of the nature tags and they are hoping they can find a way to turn that into points later on. After that, they can take the placement bonus of two sand dollars. Well, they are now done with their turn and that means the blue player can go. And they are more than happy to take this card right here. So that is going to give them a sand dollar for the food truck bonus. And it looks like uh, there is going to be another possibility of a happy day on our next turn. So they can add this into their area and they're gonna go up here. As you can see, that has a nature, local, sport, and wave tag on it. And if this card over here is next to a wave tag and a ring feature, then that will be worth two plus two or four points. So that uh, did both of those. This also extends their uh, sport as well as local tags. So that's pretty great overall. In fact, they already have one local over here ready to go into that surfing spot. They, of course, have to move them over there, but they have lots of time to make that happen. With that, they are now done with their turn, and now we can take our turn. Uh, interestingly enough, this food truck is exactly where it was on our last turn, and if we want to take this card, then we would once again get a happy day bonus. 
Well, that does seem tempting, but I think instead of doing that, let's do this sand dollar action. That is going to cost us two of these, and the reason we're doing that is because we can then take a tourist or local tag card from anywhere, and that lets us take this one. Now, this is a pretty great card for us. It'll fit right down over here, and it will come into play with a local. Now, the reason this is good is because we now have four people over here close to these two areas that want four, and this has a local tag, which gives us a spot to travel with our VIP. So I think unlocking that is going to be worth it to us overall. It is uh, definitely tempting to go for that happy day, and perhaps that was actually the better play, but this is the one that I want to do. One other thing to note is that this card just gave us three points because it is adjacent to at least one local tag over here on our starting tile. So let's finish our turn by resetting the market, and now the yellow player can go. After considering their options, they are going to go with the happy day. So they can take this card, and then they will place it right over here. Now that comes into play with two tourists, and it looks like there is an ice cream cart over there on the beach. And the important piece about this is that they now have a chain of three tourist tags, which means they've just unlocked five victory points for them at the end of the game. Now it is true that they currently have four people not currently on a ring, so they do want to take care of that at some point, but the game is not close to being over yet. After that, they can take their happy day bonus, and they've decided to take two sand dollars. After that, the food truck will head two spaces forward, and then the yellow player can finish their turn by resetting the market. Next up, the blue player can go, and they've decided to spend all four of their sand dollars in order to perform this action here. Now that lets them take both cards in a column, and they want to take these. And there is a food truck there, but of course they don't get that bonus because they did a sand dollar action. So they can place these cards down, and they're going to go here as well as there. So far they are leaning very heavy on the right-hand side of their area. Now as you can see, this is going to give them a tourist, a local, as well as two more sand dollars. And then down below, this is going to give them three locals, and it will give them two points at the end of the game if this is not adjacent to a tourist tag. This is the Kaiju Squid uh, restaurant right here, which is apparently really popular with the locals, and they don't want tourists around. So all three of these will head down over here, and the blue player looks to be in a good spot to fill this in and still have a lot of people left over. With that, the blue player is done, so they can reset the market. And a very interesting card just came out. As you can see right over here, it says this is the Santa Monica Pier. And down on that sign, it says no cards can be played to the left of this card. It has a whole bunch of tags on it, as you can see. But again, that is a restriction. So you can no longer play over there because that is where the pier is. Well, it's now our turn, and we have to take this card. It is so good for us at this moment. Uh, we can grab it, and of course we will get the food truck bonus. That will scooch this over, and then the only place we can put this is right over here. This does mean we can't place to the left, but we already have three cards over here, which gives us some good street options. And of course, we can always build to the right. Now, one of the reasons this is so good is because it has two wave icons on it, and that means we will get five points for this card instead of three points, which is what I was expecting us to get, because I figured we'd only get one wave icon over here. On top of that, we will get one sand dollar, and we are going to get four tourists and one local. Uh, now, this could be a good thing, but it also could be a liability. Remember, at the end of the game, the player with the most unplaced people is going to lose four victory points, and the second most will lose two points. So we have a whole bunch of people that we want to give activities to before the game ends. On top of that, it's going to be a little harder to give them activities, considering we can't place over here anymore. With that, we have finished up our turn, so now the yellow player can go. And they've decided to take this card, which means they will get the food truck bonus of a sand dollar, and of course that will move over here, so there is another happy day possibility for the next player turn. They can add this over here, and they have a whole bunch of sand dollars at this point, but remember, they will get one point at the end of the game for each of them, so that makes sense. Now they want to put this over there, which is going to give them yet another sand dollar, and they will get four points at the end of the game if they have two of any type of person in this ring, and as you can see, they are already well positioned to make that happen. Well, they are now done with their turn, so the blue player can go. And without much thought, they've snapped up this card. With it, they are going to continue building out to the right, and that is going to give them a local and a sand dollar. 
And more importantly, you can see down here that if this is a part of a chain of local tags that is four or more, this will be worth six points. And as you can see, it is a part of a chain of five, actually. So it's even more than they needed. So that's finished up their turn. And that means now we get to go. And if we want to, we could have a happy day if we take this card. Unfortunately for us, I don't think that makes sense for us to do, and there's actually a pretty good card over here for us. That is a street card that does have a ring on it. It gives four points if it has two people in it, and that'll fit right over here. Now, I suppose this does have a sport icon, so instead of that, we could put it over here. That would unlock the scoring for this, but that is a lot of rings nowhere near all of our people. Uh, that was maybe not the best idea in general, but either way, I think let's worry about that later. Hopefully we can find more sport tags, and let's definitely set ourselves up to start getting points for some of these people. After that, we can reset the market, and then yellow can go. And after considering the options, they are going to go with the happy day. So they're going to take this card and they've decided to place it right over here. It looks like they have been very beach-centric so far in their building. Now, this is going to come into play with two locals as well as two of the tourists, and this is worth two points to them already because it is adjacent to a nature tag. After that, it's time for them to take their happy day bonus, and they are going to move two people once. In this case, they will move both of these tourists over, and that's going to score them four more points at the end of the game. After that's complete, the food truck is going to move two spaces forward, and interestingly enough, this foodie has not moved in a while. It's this food truck that's been going around and around in circles. Uh, now the yellow player is done with their turn, so this is going to slide down, and the blue player can go. After considering their options, they are going to take this card, so it looks like I spoke too soon. The foodie is now going to finally move at the end of this turn, uh, so that means blue can get a single move as a bonus once they place their card. So they'll put this right over here, and then with their one movement from the foodie bonus, they are going to move this local up over there to the surfing spot. After that, the foodie will head over here, and then Blue can finish out their turn, which means it's now time for us to go. And I honestly don't like any of these options out here. Uh, at this point, we have so many people on this spot, and I am hesitant to take more. Uh, part of me says, well, we could take this because we would get the foodie bonus to start moving these people around, but that would give us three more tourists, and I'm just not sure if that makes sense for us. Now, we could take this if we wanted, and the only spot we could put it is over here. In fact, for the rest of the game, all beach cards that we take have to go over there to the right. Now, we already have um, two of these uh, spots that can take the various people, so that is something that we don't necessarily need, although it would not add things in. Now, one thing I am tempted to do is to spend two of our sand dollars to activate this so that we could take that card. Now, this card by itself isn't particularly amazing. It gives points if it's next to nature or tourist tags, and we would not be able to put it next to either of those yet, but that would also let us move two people once, and that certainly would be a nice benefit. Now, of course, two sand dollars is worth one victory point to us, so we have to keep that in mind as well. Well, after considering it, I think let's just take this card and we'll put it over there. We have a lot of spots for people to go into and not a lot of people over here, but obviously there are a lot of ways to add more people to our tableau, so hypothetically it shouldn't be too hard to fill those in if, of course, we can find the movement to make it happen. With that, our turn is done, so we can reset and then the yellow player can go. And they've decided to take this card, which is the aquarium. So they have to add this down and they'll put it here and this will give them points equal to their number of nature tags as long as this is in a chain of at least five nature tags. So that could be five or more points if they are able to get enough of those tags. Currently they are in a chain of three, so that is not a bad start. Now that is going to give them one sand dollar as a placement bonus. And with that business tag, they have a new very convenient spot to move their VIP in order to get more points for those foot tokens. After that, the yellow player is done, so now the blue player can go. And they've decided to spend two sand dollars in order to activate this action. Now, with that, they are going to take this card because it does have a local tag, and they can also move two people once. In this case, they'll put this right over here, and this appears to be a really good spot for surfing with those two wave tags. Now, this will give them three points if they put three locals over here, which is not a great ratio, but they do have a lot of locals, and they can start trying to move them over there. Now that card does not have any bonuses, but they do of course get the sand dollar action bonus of two movements. So they are going to move this local over here, which will satisfy that condition and give them three points. And with their other move, they'll send this tourist to that volleyball net. 
Well, that has finished up the blue player's turn, so now we can go. And I just realized that on our last turn, when we put this down, we made a chain of three or more of those sporting tags. So this was a better play than I realized because that gave us three points at least, and that could go up even more if we were able to extend the chain. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, there are no sport tags, so that's not going to happen on this turn. So let's now take a card. Now, I think what we should do might seem a little bit silly, and that involves spending two of our sand dollars to take this card. Now, we could just take this card anyway, but this will give us two movement, and I think that is going to be worth it for these sand dollars. We're giving up one point worth of sand dollars, and I think that will be worth more than a point to us. So we can get rid of those, and then I think we should add this one down over here. That's going to give us three points at the end of the game if it's next to at least one sport tag, and it is. So that is three points in our pocket. And now we can move two people once, and I figure in this case, let's send a local down as well as a tourist. So that has just secured four more points for us at the end of the game. All right, our turn is done, so now the yellow player can go. And they really like the idea of that card. Now they can get it if they spend two of their sand dollars, and they have a lot of these to spend. So that will let them pick this up because it does have a local tag on it. In addition to taking this card, they will also be able to move two people once. Well, they're going to put this right over here, and then they will immediately move both of these locals onto that surfing spot. So that was a really good turn for them. Well, they can finish by resetting the market, and now the blue player can go. And they've decided to take this card here. So that is going to give them a sand dollar as a bonus for the food truck, and then it's going to move on. And then they are going to continue going over here to the right. Now that is going to give them a sand dollar plus a tourist and two locals. And with that, they are done with their turn. So the market can be reset, and now we can go. And at this point, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards. Remember, the game is going to end at the end of a round where one player gets to 14 or more cards. So that is definitely starting to approach. With this in mind, I think we need to prioritize moving some people around to try and get them into these rings. So let's take this card here, and it has to go onto the right side because, of course, with the Santa Monica Pier is over here on the left. After that, the placement bonus lets us move one person two times. Now, this ring here will give us two points if any one person is in there, but I'm not sure if that is the priority over maybe trying to fill some of these up that are closer. Yeah, I think let's send this tourist two spaces over like that with this action, so that with one move we can send this person here to unlock those two points. Uh, one person for two points is certainly better than two for two, but this is a lot closer to the people that we have. All right, that's finished up our turn, so now the yellow player can go and they have decided to take this card right here. Now that is going to give them a foodie bonus, and they've decided to place it over here. As you can see, that will give them four points at the end of the game if it is in a chain of three or more tourist tags, and it's currently in a chain of four, so that is four points to them. Now this looks to be a free parking lot, so it's no surprise to see some tourists crowding in over here. After that, the foodie will give them a move, and they are going to move their VIP over here. This spot is on the street, and it does have a business tag, so that is going to give them a footprint token. After that, the foodie will move over here to the right, and now the yellow player is done. So the blue player can now take their turn. After considering their options, they are going to take this card, which is going to give them a foodie bonus, and then the foodie will head over here. So on our turn, we will have the option of having a good day. That is, of course, if we take this card here. So Blue can add this into their area, and for the first time in the game, they're going to go over here to the left. Now, as a bonus, they can move two of their people up to two times. And in this case, they will move this local two times over there, and this local will move two times as well. So that has filled in this ring, which will give them four more points. Next up, they can reset the market, and that has finished out their turn. So now we can take our turn. Well, at this point, we have 11 cards, and I think we need to continue focusing on moving some of our people around. With that in mind, I think we should take this card entirely because it will give us a happy day reward. Now, we have to put this right over here, and that will give us six points at the end of the game if it is in a chain of four or more nature icons, and currently it's in a chain of two. So it's possible we could pull this off, but uh, not super likely, I suppose. But who knows? Maybe we'll be able to make it happen. There are a couple of those nature tags out here already. Now, after that goes down, we can take this happy day bonus, and let's just take two movement. With this in mind, we can move a local over here, which will give us three points, and this one will head over there, and that will give us two points. After that, the food truck is going to move two spaces forward, and that has finished up our turn. 
So we can refresh the market, and now the yellow player can go. Huh, it looks like we have a new action up here that we have not seen yet in the game. Now this starts with two locals, which is actually enough to fill it, and then you can move up to three of any type of person onto this spot from anywhere in your area. After considering these options, they are going to take this card, and that will come with a foodie bonus. Now they're going to put this over here, which means it is part of a chain of four of these nature icons, so they are one away from activating this scoring objective down here. Now this is next to at least one of the business icons, so that is going to be worth three points to them at the end of the game. Now they can take their foodie bonus, and in this case, they are going to move their VIP over here, where they don't put a footprint down because, of course, there is not a business or local tag, but they want to be flexible in case they can move them onto a card here before the game ends that would give them another point. So that's finished up the yellow player's turn, and now the blue player can go. Oh, it looks like we have a new icon. This says that you can put any number of people into this ring, and as long as you have at least one person there, you will get three points. After considering their options, Blue wants to take this card. They'll put that right over here, and that will give them a sand dollar. And as long as this is in a chain of three or more wave tags, they will get points equal to those tags. At this point, that is just a chain of two, so they are certainly hoping to extend that out before the game ends. Well, that's finished up their turn, so now we get to go. We have a few options available to us, and if we had one more sand dollar, we could take two cards, which would force this to be the final round, because we currently have 12. Now, uh, before we move on, I just realized that uh, whenever you have a visiting bonus up here that matches your tag, you should actually start the game with one of these tokens down. So technically, this should have been here all game long. Sorry about that. Now, at this point, I think let's take this card right here. I know we've been trying to not get more people, but I think this is probably going to be worth it to us. To start things off, that is going to give us a uh, sand dollar as a bonus, and then this will head over here. And this could be important because not only is that worth potentially another point, but it also means on our next turn, if we have a next turn, we could spend all of these to place two cards to get up to 15 cards down. Now we can put this down onto the board, and I think we should place it right over here. This of course starts with four of these tourists on it, and then we can move up to eight tourists one time. That means we could send these two right up here, so by doing this we just got three more points. And now we can move six more tourists, and I figure we'll send one over here. They aren't in the ring, but we could maybe move them over here later. And then over here, we could send all three of these down. So once again, they are not in the ring, but that leaves us more flexible, so we could potentially send them into a ring over here if we're able to place a card there before the game is over. At this point, we've used six out of these eight bonus moves, and I don't see a reason to move any of the other tourists, so that is going to finish this turn. So we can reset the market, and then the yellow player can go. And they've decided to take this card, so that is going to give them a foodie bonus. And then they'll put this over here. After that, they will get one local onto that card, and they will also get one sand dollar. Next up, they do get one movement from the foodie bonus, and they're not really seeing a good move to have. Uh, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people currently not in rings, which is a concern for them, but they don't have good places to send them. So they are not going to use that foodie bonus. So the foodie will head over here, and then they can reset for the blue player's turn. And it looks like they have four sand dollars, which they are going to spend immediately to perform this action. So that means they are going to take both cards from a column, and they want this column right here. Next up, they can place these, and one will go over here, and the other one will go right down over there. After that, they can move two people twice, and they will start by moving this VIP one, two locations, and that did match up with one of their icons, so they could put a footprint down. And then with the other double move, they are going to move this VIP, and they are going to move here, which will put down a footprint for the uh, sporting icon. And then they'll move up here and put a foot token down because this spot has both tags. Next up, they get one movement from the sand dollar action, and they are going to move this VIP over here where they do not put down a footprint token. All right, they are now done with their turn, and at this point we can see that they have exactly 14 cards, which means the end game has been triggered. You'll note that they don't get any points for the sand dollars, so it made sense for them to liquidate all of them in order to initiate the end game, stopping their opponents from taking more turns. Now, whenever the end game is triggered, we keep playing until the end of the round, and as we can see, the blue player is at the end of the round because we were the starting player. 
This means that now that their turn is over, the game has officially ended, and it's now time for everyone to perform their final movements. If you remember from the tutorial, the way this works is every tourist and VIP can move at once, and every local can move up to three times. Now, if I'm being honest, I kind of forgot about this until just a round or two ago, so we aren't necessarily in a great spot to utilize this, but let's go ahead and use it anyway. So we can move this tourist right over here, and then this VIP can head into this spot. That matches up right there with the local tag, and that's the first time in the game that our VIP has moved. So we can put this footprint token down, and then I don't see a reason to move anyone else in our area. Moving on, the yellow player is not going to move anyone because they ended with way more people than they had rings to actually fit them into. Lastly, we have the blue player, and they are well positioned to do this movement. They're going to move this VIP over here, which is going to match up with the wave tag, so that is going to give them a footprint. Then they're going to move this VIP over to this spot. That has a sporting tag, so that means they can put another foot down, and then they can move these locals up to three times each. So these two are going to head over here to the Joan of Arcade, and that is going to give them two points at the end of the game. And they're also going to move these two locals once over there to that three-point surfing spot. At this point, it's now time for us to figure out our final scores, and we can do that with this score tracker pad here. So let's start up here, and the first thing we will score are our completed scoring rings. So as you can see, we will get four points for this one, and then two for that, then three points here and there, and then another two points for that card. All told, that is 14 points, and then we can score for the foot tokens for where our visitor went. As you can see, we did not move our visitor much at all in this game. They only moved once, and we are going to get points for the tourist and local tags on spots with these foot tokens. So that means we will get one, two points for that. After that, we can score for all of our beach cards on the top, and we can go from the left over to the right. Now, this is going to give us five points because it is adjacent to two of these wave tags on the pier. Uh, after that, we do not lose four points because this is not adjacent to any cards that give people as a bonus. And then over here, we will get one point for every two sand dollars we have. As you can see, that is two points total for the four Santa dollars, and that is it for the top scoring, because this is not a part of a chain of four or more nature tags. So that is seven points for those along the top, and then we can score the bottom. Over here, we will get three points, because this is adjacent to at least one sporting tag. Next up here, we will get three points, because this is adjacent to at least one of the local tags. After that, this will give us points equal to the number of sporting tags in this chain, as long as it has at least three, and it is exactly three, so that is going to be worth three points, and that's it for our bottom scoring. After that, we can score for the top option on the public objective. Over here, that says we will get two points for every wave tag in our longest group of wave tags. In this case, that is just the pier. Uh, if we had planned this better, maybe we could have stacked some more of those. In fact, actually, when I look out here, these are the only wave tags that we picked up throughout the entire game. So there are two there, which will give us four points. And then after that, we can score the second of those objectives. This one will give us two points for every tag in the largest chain of that type of tag. And the largest chain we have total is right over here with these three sporting tags. So that is going to be three times two. So that will give us six points, and the final of the public objectives has to do with getting negative points for having too many unplaced people. Now we have to see what our opponents have in order to figure out if we lose points. So before we move on, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five unplaced people. And for the moment, we'll just write a little five over here in the top corner, and then figure out how many points we get once we score our opponents. So we can move on to the yellow player, and when it comes to these scoring rings, they have four points for this and four more points there. After that, there is four points on this card, so that is going to be 12 points for those. After that, they can score their footprint tokens. It looks like they have three of them, and they will get one point for every one of the business and local tags on those cards. So that is going to be one, two, three, four points. And then they can score the top objectives on these beach cards. Well, this one is worth two points because it is adjacent to at least one of the business tags. And then this one is worth one point for every sand dollar they ended the game with. In this case, that is seven, so that worked out pretty well for them, giving them seven victory points. Then there is this one, which is two points because it is adjacent to at least one nature tag. 
which means they are getting 11 points for those top cards. And then for their bottom cards, this will give them three points if it is adjacent to at least one business tag, and it is. And this one would be worth one point for every nature tag in this chain if the chain was at least five, but it is four. So they were really close to making that happen, but that is actually worth zero points. Next up, this is worth five points because it is a part of a chain of at least three of these tourist tags. And the same goes over here where this will give them four points. So that is going to give them 12 points. And now they can score two points for each wave in their longest group. That looks to be right over here, which is just two waves. There is this card, which breaks that one up from being a part of it. So that is going to be worth four points to them. After that, they will score two points for every tag in their longest chain of tags. And they have two chains of four with the tourist and nature tags. So either way, that is going to be eight points. They can put that right over here. And lastly, they can count up their unplaced people. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. So we'll put a little nine in the corner and then move on to the blue player. Just like the rest of us, they can start by scoring their completed rings. It looks like they have three points for this one, four points for that, and three points here. And then they also have two points down over there. So that is 12 points total. And now they can score up their footprint tokens. As you can see, they did really well with these, and they will get one point for every wave tag and sport tag on a spot with one of these tokens. So this means they will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points total for those. After that, they can start scoring their top cards. Now this is going to be worth one point for every wave tag in this chain if the chain has at least three tags, and it has exactly three tags, so that is worth three points to them. After that, they will get two points because this is adjacent to at least one local tag. And then that is it for their top row scoring. So that's going to give them five points. And now they can score the bottom row. This right over here will give them two points because it is not adjacent to one of these ring features. And then this will be worth two plus two points because it is adjacent to at least one wave tag. And it is adjacent to at least one of those ring features. Moving on, this is worth two points to them because it is not adjacent to a tourist tag. And then this is worth a whopping six points because it is part of a chain of at least four of these local tags. In fact, that chain has five in it. Lastly, this is worth two points because it is adjacent to at least one local tag. All told, that is 16 points for them. And now they can score two points for every wave tag in their longest group. In this case, that looks to be three. So that is going to be worth six points to them. And then after that, they can get two points for every tag in their largest group of tags. And as I said before, they have a chain of the uh, local tags, which is five. So that is five times two or 10 points for them. So they can write 10 points in over here. And finally, they can count up their number of unplaced people. In this case, they have one, two, three. So we can put a little three over here. And now we can score this final objective. So the player with the most unplaced people will lose four points, and that is going to be the yellow player, so they will lose four. And the player who has the second most is going to lose two points, and unfortunately that is us with our five, so we are going to lose two points. After that, the last thing that we have to do is simply add up all of these numbers. After that is done, it looks like the blue player has won the game with 56 points. The yellow player came in second with 47, and unfortunately, we came in last place with 40 points, and that completed one full three-player game of Santa Monica. Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, even though we did come in last place there at the end. Uh, I will admit that while I was playing through this game, I did kind of um, forget about a couple of the key rules to the game. Uh, the first of those being that uh, right before scoring, every one of the people will get a move. Um, that slipped my mind until just a turn or two before the end of the game. So if that had been stuck there in my mind the whole way, then maybe we would have played a little bit differently to try and get more um, destinations for the people that we had at the end. Um, also, it kind of slipped my mind about having the largest section of waves that I could. Uh, the other objectives, I was definitely keeping my mind on, but I guess this just goes to show that there is a lot to think about, and uh, especially uh, so when I'm trying to play three people at the same time. I think uh, it would not have been anywhere near as uh, big of a problem to forget those things if I was just focusing on one person. Now, I think one of the reasons that we lost is because we, I don't know, we're a little bit um, cavalier with our spending of the sand dollars. It seems like we had them, so we spent them, we had them, so we spent them, and they did give us some points at the end of the game, but 
I'm not sure if all the decisions ended up turning into a cohesive strategy for us. Obviously, we lost, so that seems uh, relatively obvious there. But um, I know at one point in particular, when we picked up the card for the Santa Monica Pier, that seemed like a great uh, pickup at the time because of the um, getting us points for the card that it was adjacent to and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I think maybe that was actually a mistake. It stopped us being able to play beaches on that side, which really uh, constrained the beach cards that we picked up in the future. And um, it also just gave us a lot of people that we had to find locations for. And we struggled with doing that. Um, now, even if we had uh, placed more people than any of our opponents, then we still would have lost. Uh, I guess the difference is we would have had two more points and the blue player would have had two less points, but they still would have won in that case. So I think uh, in general, uh, the reason uh, the blue player won is because they played the game really well. Um, I guess the last thing I'd like to mention is that uh, moving the VIPs around got slightly overlooked as we were playing through the game. And I think part of that might be because we got a lot of cards that had, uh, that, that gave people. And, you know, there's a pretty moderate sized deck. I still have the game set up over here. And we didn't see any of these cards, and obviously you will see more cards when you play a four-player game, and I think it's possible that we just saw a lot of those generate people cards um, compared to the locations for those people kind of in the early stages of the game, which meant we all had tons of people to move around. Um, now, obviously, the yellow player uh, did not use their movements there at the end, so they could have built things out better to use their VIP to get some movements out of that, but um, they weren't able to actually make that happen. So yeah, um, at the end of the day, I think this did an okay job of showing how Santa Monica plays. This was my first time playing, period, so that also goes into uh, having a couple things not become uh, uh, super prominent in my strategy as I was playing it. So um, this is what a game looks like when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and I still think it showed off a lot of the different aspects of the game. Um, obviously, you can do a lot of things, and you can't do everything in the time span of the game because it's not a very long game, and you just have to focus on the things that give you the most points, and uh, we did not do that very well. So I think that is going to wrap up all my thoughts on this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.